University of Kent joins me now. Matt, thanks for joining us today. So yourself and David Rosado, is that right, have created this report. Yeah. What are the key findings what, that are most uh, pertinent and interesting? Yeah, so a couple of years ago um, in the United States, there was this big debate about the so-called great awakening of media. And mm -hmm. people were pointing to places like the New York Times, the Washington Post, and saying, well, why are we now talking only about identity politics? Why are we only talking about race, sex, and gender? And David Rosado's earlier work showed this explosion in references to those terms. Mm. And I sat there looking at this debate and thinking, well, that must be unique to the United States. Well, let's check that out. Yeah. And I decided to work with David and say, well, why don't we look at UK media? And actually what we found was the exact same thing. In fact, if anything, UK media has become really more obsessed with these terms than the US. And, and I think actually this has got some pretty profound implications for the country and also for the media. So has this come about because of what we call the culture war? And I remember reading a number of uh, a while ago now uh, that The Guardian and many economists for The Guardian often claim the culture war is a right wing myth. But they came out at the top of the people who mentioned the phrase culture war more than any other publication. Yeah. Now, personally, I don't like the phrase culture war because I think when we're talking about women's rights or children's welfare. I don't think that's a culture war. But that's true. We found that media on the left of the landscape was much more likely over the last 20 years to use terms like racism, transphobia, homophobia, but also a more specific set of terms that we associate with woke politics or social justice politics, terms like slavery, cultural appropriation, white privilege, whiteness. And over the last 20 years, basically what you've seen is this vocabulary of wokeism or social justice ideology has essentially gone mainstream. It's right. more prominent on the left. It's also prominent on the right, largely in response to these debates that we've seen. But I would argue it's now disconnected from the reality of the world that we live in, that lots of things like racism and uh, homophobia have declined sharply over the last few decades. Yes. But yet at the same time, our national conversation about those things has sort of been put on steroids. And I think we need to ask some questions about, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, I mean, I think that the phrase culture war has become a kind of shorthand for this current, uh, these current debates about social justice in particular, because obviously every era has a different form of culture war. And sure. this, this is, I suppose, ours. I mean, does that, from what you're saying there with the findings, does that imply that really this is something that has been generated from the left wing media or at least certainly perpetuated? Yeah, so the Americans are having the exact same debate as us as to what's behind it. I think there's a few things. Um, one is the way in which the media model has changed. We've become focused on, you know, clickbait media, which has got to be more moralistic, sensationalist. You know, take all of the uh, stories over the last week about issues around gender identity and so on. These are really important issues. People want to talk about them. They also generate a lot of activity, so the media then invests in them to a greater degree. But actually, I think a bigger factor is how the media class itself is changing. Mm. So we also know that compared to the 70s and the 80s, uh, journalists in the UK, like in the US, are much more likely now to be university educated. Over half of them now have gone through Oxbridge and Russell Group uh, universities, where typically these ideas tend to circulate more prominently than they do in other institutions. And I think there's a case to be made, actually, about the media class has become not just more insular, but more disconnected from the rest of the country and yes. perhaps has invested in this belief system, which, as other academics have argued, has become something of a status symbol that, you know, a lot of uh, people now, um, for example, um, uh, colleagues at Cambridge have argued, uh, Rob Henderson, among others, that, that woke ism, social justice ideology for the elite, has become a marker of status. Yes. That whereas 30 years ago it was about showing your wealth and your, your ability to have luxury time and so on, today it's about your awareness of terms like cultural appropriation, white privilege, and that has become a new marker of your social status relative to others. And the media class, I think, have, have really embraced that. I mean,